So you're standing in the tool crib at Home Depot, you need a hammer, and you're overwhelmed by the selections. I know, I was there just a couple days ago, and I stood there and looked at that, I couldn't believe the variety. And I thought to myself as I was looking at that, man, if I was a, a, a young guy or didn't to grow up in the trades or go through an apprenticeship, I wouldn't even know where to begin. I want a general purpose hammer. Where do I start? What are the differences? Why are there so minis? So minis, yeah. So we're going to talk about that today, and this is going to be a great video because I'm going to sh share with you a, a brief history on a couple things that I think, and some personal stories that I think you'll find really, um, really enjoyable. I know I do. I, I was I was doing the research for this video. I learned some things that I didn't know. It was fascinating how the tools have evolved, how they've come to the to be the tools that we have in our hands today that we so easily we take for granted. So let's just cut through all of it. By and large, the hammers come down to two categories. What we call a framing hammer, which is what we have right here on this side, and then what we have a finish hammer, which we have over here. There's the rigging axe, we're gonna to get to that. And then there's something kind of in the middle, what I would call maybe like a, a, a crossover type of hammer that is kind of like a framing hammer and kind of like a, frame, er, a finish hammer in some ways. So here's how it breaks down. How do you tell the difference? When does a hammer become a framing hammer? Well, a framing hammer is going to have straight claws. You see how those claws are straight right there? If we contrast that with the finish hammer and see, see, how, see how curved they are right there? Big difference. The framing hammer, the reason why it has those claws is that this is a general purpose hammer, very specific for framing. It's gonna be used for lifting, for prying, even you know, in the real world, an impromptu hatchet, ax, you know, for, for well, those of us who have framed, you know what I'm talking about. Also, a framing hammer is gonna have a long handle, much longer than a traditional finish hammer, and typically a flat head. This flat here is not going to have much of a dome on it. Not always, but for the most part, and a waffle pattern for non-slip, so you don't get stuck or don't slip off there and, and bend your nails. It's gonna be a weight forward design oftentimes with the majority or the bulk of the, or the weight of it or the mass in the head, which if you're not used to it, when you pick it up, will feel a little bit odd, but when you start driving big 16 penny nails, you'll see that it's a huge advantage. Weight wise, they're typically gonna be between 20 and 32 ounces. I don't know if I've ever seen a framing hammer that was over 32 ounces, but I'll tell you what, it takes a man to swing one of those all day. Um, it's too much, it's just too much uh, for, 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 the, for the common man, uh, for, the, for the handyman type. Over to the finish hammers. Now finish ham hammers are going to be light. They're gonna be anywhere from usually 10 ounces to 16 ounces. They're gonna have a much smaller head. Look at the difference here. See that? That's a, that's a big difference there. Smaller head. They're gonna have those really curved claws, not the straight claws like we have on the, on the framing hammers. This, these claws are designed specifically for pulling nails. They are better at pulling nails because of that angle than a framing hammer is. However, these claws are useless for prying tasks where you can use the framing hammer claws for prying maybe boards apart or lifting walls or myriad of all different sorts of things. It's very versatile. When you try to use a finish hammer claws for any of those tasks, it is, well, it just doesn't work at all. Also, your finished hammers are gonna have a domed, more of a domed uh, striking surface here. And the reason for that is in the experienced hand, uh, a man or woman can, can hit that hammer, hit that nail without causing a, a dent in the wood. As a guy I used to work with called it a Polish rose. I don't know why. I never forget that. Uh, but, but you can hit that, keep that, if you hit it right in the center, it'll set that nail in there without marring the wood, doing finished work. Now, I haven't touched on what it called kind of a bit of the crossover hammer. So you see characteristics of both hammers in this. You'll see that it has this smooth, pretty flat with a very slightly domed surface on it, but it's got a short handle, like a finish. 16 ounce or so, maybe a little bit more right around there, but it's got, the, look, it's got those straight claws. Straight claws there for, for prying tasks. A great general purpose hammer. It gives you a kind of a combination of both. Could you take this hammer out and build a tree house or a, um, a uh, bird house or furniture? Yes, would it be perfect? For, no, not perfect for either one, but if you're just gonna have one hammer, it's a great way to go. 
There's one hammer here that, that, that you haven't seen. You may not be familiar with it. It's, uh, oh, it's a very interesting story where this came from. This, well, out west here is called a rigging axe, a 28 ounce Vaughn waffle pattern rigging axe. So interesting. When I was a, when I was a wee lad uh, working as a teenager working in a framing crew, I remember some of the experienced guys had these in their tool belts. And man, we, the young guys thought that that was about the coolest thing ever. We wanted a rigging axe so bad. And so we get, I remember the day I bought my rigging axe and showed up on the job and I just thought that that was just the greatest thing. So where did this come from? And it kind of seems like a strange design. It's got uh, 28 ounces, as I said, it's got the waffle pattern. This is the V notch there for a nail puller and a hatchet head on the back. So back in the day, in the forties after World War II, a lot of the guys, uh, men sought employment in the building oil derricks down, down south around Texas and stuff. And so this hammer or this rigging axe came out of that. They were using a combination of timbers and lumber and they could p pound nails or spikes. They could shape or chisel off uh, different things for joinery or whatever it was that they used to build oil derricks. I, I haven't built one. I don't know all of the nuances of it. But as that, uh, as times changed and people started to settle out west in California mainly and those great huge suburbs started to be built, those workers went out there and followed that work to, to frame houses out there and they brought their rigging axes with them. And the reason why they liked the rigging axe for framing was these are, this is an early time and there were companies like Plum and Estwing and Vaughn, they weren't producing hammers that were framing specific like this, that were really built for, for, for production framing. Long handles, waffle heads, the, the proper weight. What guys will tell you, the old timers that liked to use the rigging axes was that this 28 ounce weight was just perfect. It was perfectly balanced. It was the perfect hammer for striking nails. The guys that I used to work with, and they've all, many of them would boast, and they could, uh, they would uh, say, I can knock a 16-penny nail in with one hit with my, with my rigging axe, and, and a lot of men could do that. And it was, the, it was a great hammer, perfectly balanced. Well, as the industry grew and manufacturers finally caught up, they started producing hammers that were framing specific, like these. And that kind of was the end of the rigging axe. Just a funny side story. Uh, I when I was young, when we, we could always tell the framers uh, that came up from California. First off, they would show up on the job site and they were always wearing shorts. And at the slightest hint of rain, they would pack up and go home. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a, a sure sign of, you know how California, if you've ever been there, as soon as they get the smallest glimmer of rain, the whole state just goes off the rails. I don't know why, why, why that is, but it's, it's true. And it's definitely true. We're getting there. Handle material. We've got to make some choices. What type of handle material is going to be the best? What choices do we have? You're going to see there's going to be steel like this. We're going to see fiberglass. We're going to see wood. We're going to see even titanium heads and, and all of that, all of these things. So what's the advantage of both? Well, wood, of course, is the best. And the guy who swings it all the time is going to tell you that. It's like, I, I've got to have the wood handle because of the shock. The problem with these metal hammers is that vibration, those harmonics, comes through and translates into your skeleton and will give you sore elbow. And they're, they're not a pleasant hammer to sing, swing all the time. Next best thing, fiberglass is pretty good. It's pretty good at dampening that, that harmonic balance. Uh, not a bad choice at all. A lot of the older guys, they liked, my granddad, he liked the fiberglass handles. And of course, you've got the, the metal handles. And you're going to see here that I heavily lean towards the metal handles. And there's a reason for that, and it's durability. The reason why I like these is that these hammers will just last you a lifetime. These S-Wings, I cannot tell you the abuse that I've put them through. And still, I see no reason why I won't have them, why I would ever need to buy another hammer. Durability for the common guy, for the guy that's just the, the, the handyman like myself, this is a great option just because it's just so tough and just so affordable. Here's the problem with the wooden handles. I cannot tell you how many California framers, Vaughn Fra California framer hammers I've bought. I don't have one today because why? Well, they were wood handled, they were wonderful hammers, but the handles break and we all get busy and you don't have time to replace it and then it just it goes away. It just goes away, but not the Vaughn's or the, not the, the S-Wings or whatever it is you choose, they just go and go and go. Wonderful tool. Now, some of you I know in the comments are going to come up and say, well, I, I like 
I like my titanium headed stiletto or the hearts or the really premium high end framing hammers. And, and I understand that. I, I $150 for a hammer, it's a lot of money. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put anyone down for spending that on your on your <laughs> on your hammer. Who am I? You know, I wear my boots are very expensive and that's where I choose to make my lose to spend my money. So if you choose to spend your money on a on a stiletto hammer, uh, I'm not going to cover that. I haven't used them. They are beautiful. Uh, never held one because they're always locked up in the case at the hardware store. So um, that's a whole nother category. But for the pro, maybe. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, is it, are they really that much better? Are they really that much better than an S-Wing? Or is it so you can put it in your tool belt and be the cock of the walk on the job site? I don't know. I mean, if you're an experienced framer and you're the man, uh, I think that that's cool. You can have that hammer. But if you're a young apprentice and you show up with one of those, I think, well, I think that that's kind of silly. But who am I? I mean, as nothing fancy says, second kind of cool. Who can explain it? You know, in these videos, I like to share you know, tips and tricks or kind of pro or trade secret things. I don't have a lot of those with hammers. I do have a few, something to consider. So one thing you can do with your hammer is when you're pulling nails on it, is keep a little block of wood in your tool belt like this. And what that does is, let's say you have a nail right here you wanna pull. As you pull down, you're exerting tremendous force on the wood down here, and if you're working with things that are nice finishes, it will mar it and damage it. If you pry against a piece of wood like this, it spreads that force out and will protect it. It's a kind of a neat feature. Also, you know, think about being having uh, hammers that are specific to your job. If you're an electrician, for example, or you're an apprentice or gonna do electrical work, one thing that I do is I find out what are the height of my electrical boxes that I'm gonna be setting hundreds, if not thousands of them. And my hammer, I'm gonna get something that, that's the right height. Because I use this particular hammer here to set my electrical boxes. So I set it up against the wall and it's the perfect height. As you can see right there, I just set the box on the top and little things to consider. Another thing you wanna be sure, a feature to look for in the hammer, whatever you decide, is, to, is a good flat surface right here that you can use as a, th these are kind of designed to use as a, as a hammer themselves. If you're in a tight spot and you need to get a nail in, you're in between a joist or something like that and you can't get a full swing, it can be very frustrating. Where sometimes if you turn the hammer sideways, you can get just enough and use that as a hammerhead to get, your, to get the job done. Again, back in ye old days, the nailing, talk about nail guns a little bit, the, the framing nailers, the pneumatic nailers, which are so prominent today, were starting to come around. But still, most of the framing that I remember was done by hammer in hand. Guys pounding sinkers in. The nail gun, you know, interesting story. My dad uh, was, uh, he's retired now, but he was in construction his whole life. General co contractor, did everything. Had grand crews, lots of employees, commercial, residential, the whole thing. He had a lot of experience with construction and a lot of experience working and having guys work for him. He did not like nail guns uh, for, me, for several reasons. First off, uh, I don't think you get a, as he would say the same, I don't think you get a good a job framing with nail gun because the hammer, the weight of the hammer against the nail makes, gives you a, a tighter built structure. That, that steel um, bringing everything and tightening everything up is better. Plus the nail gun removes you from the feeling and from the sensation of knowing when a nail strikes home, when a nail goes through a piece of sheeting and, and seats properly into a rafter. I have seen countless houses uh, where you'll look up before it's finished for the drywall and you'll see nails, just rows and rows of nails just sticking out through the sheeting where the, the carpenter was not hitting the, the rafter. And so it wasn't doing any good. So you get a poorly built house because as he's going along, click, 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 click with the nail gun, he can't feel. He has no idea whether he's in the joist or not. With a hammer, you always, always know. And it also, the nail guns are, because they're so explosive and so violent, they're really um, prone to, to damage wood and to split framing members. And, and they're expensive. Uh, you have to have a compressor. You have to um, buy the nail skeins. And those are very expensive. So for the common guy, I mean, don't think that you're going to, if you're going to go out and build a garage or something and you're at Home Depot, oh, I got to buy a compressor. I got to buy a nail gun. You, you don't need it. If you're a professional, of course. Um, I mean, competition's tough out there. Where I would make the exception, though, is finish, finish guns. If you're doing window casements and little trims, having a little finish nailer, ooh, I would be hard. It would be very hard to give mine up. But just, just some things to consider. So now 
what are my choices? So you're asking, so you're going to tell me, try, Cody, you're going to try to t tell me which hammer to get and you're going on for 20 minutes here and I still don't have any idea. Here's what I'd suggest. Let's say you're going to buy one hammer. You're not going to be a full on carpenter. You want to have a hammer around the house for, for do it yourself projects. It's going to be really versatile. What I would recommend would be kind of one of these hybrid style hammers, a, a 16 ouncer, a 16 ounce hammer, you, your, your choice, fiberglass is a good option, steel is a good option. If you take care of it, wood, of course, is a good option. But with, you want those straight claws so you can use it for prying tasks and stuff. I'd probably recommend a smooth face with a slight dome in it. It just gives you the ability to do lots of things. I could take this hammer and I could go out and do some framing. I could do small finish work and pound brads and stuff. Is it ideal for, e for each job? It's not. But we're talking of just one hammer. Get yourself a 16 ounce hammer with a don't go with the full framer right so if you want a little bit more versatility and you want to if you let's say you are going to do some real framing you're going to do some additions in your house or you're going to you, you want to get serious about it you're going to want to look into a real framing hammer so i'm not going to recommend that so what what do you want we have 20 ounces up to 32 ounces right that makes up our framing hammer i would probably recommend you go with a 22 or 24 ounce framing hammer Something you could choose, whether you want the waffle head or you want the smooth, it, it, it's, that's up to you. Get the long handle, but man, you just can't go wrong with a 22 ounce S-Wing, a 22 or even a 24. Stay away from the 32s. These are my framing hammers right here. This one here, I believe, is a 28 with the waffle. This one here, I believe, is a 22 or 24, somewhere around there. But I'll tell you, these hammers look so much alike that when I accidentally grab this one and throw it in my tool belt, as soon as it's in my hand, I, have dis I dislike it. Like, ooh, I got that hammer I don't like. It's too heavy. It's too much for me. I just don't do it all the time. And I, it's, it's just it's too much. I get, my, get back and get this one here. I think this is a 24, 22, 24, somewhere in there. Oh, it makes me happy. Like I can swing it all day. It doesn't fatigue me. It's strong enough where you can drive big nails. You can, you can do real work with it wonderful wonderful hammer just if i was if i lost all my hammers the first one i'd go back out and buy would be the 24 the 24 estwing great great hammer so i would have that right there that'd be my framing work do my framing do my big work and then i'd get myself a, a decent finish hammer and i have these two these are really nice this one here these are old this is a this is an old rocket isn't that neat octagon head look at that these are really similar right here. This one here is about a 10 ouncer. This one here might be 12, maybe a little bit more. I'm kind of guessing this is a plum here. Look at those curved okay. octagon handle. This is an old hammer here. Neat hammer. This is the hammer I keep from my fine woodworking. I really, really like that one. I like the rocket too. This is one Mrs. Wrangler Star that she carries in her, in her tool belt as we've been doing the ceiling. And she likes it because it's lightweight but she misses a lot because the head's small. So that's what I would come down to. I would come down to, I would get myself a short-handled finish hammer that was about 10 ounces, 12 ounces, something like that. And I'd get myself about a 22, 24 ounce framing hammer. Boy, it couldn't, you couldn't go wrong with those two. Great combination. You're gonna be able to do everything that you want to do. If I'm gonna have one, get yourself a medium length handle, 16 ounce with the straight claws and a smooth domed face and you you will be served well what i'm going to do uh, is i'll put my recommendations what i consider to be good quality and value in my store you can go to wranglermart.com if you'd like to see the tools that are featured in this video and if you purchase through there through my amazon affiliate store uh, it's a way for uh, you to support the channel it doesn't cost you any more um, and we get a small percentage of that. So that's why that's made available. And in addition, and also because I get so many questions, people want to know particular tools that I like. And if it's on the store, um, I like it. I probably have it and uh, enjoy using it. That's why I share it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, and we'll see you guys on the next video. First week of January and the snow continues to fall. We've had snow now for what, four weeks? Coming up on three and a half feet, four feet in some of the drifts. I don't, no sign of ending. It's been very cold. Boy, it's been tough. We uh, got the house all opened up when it's 14, 17 degrees outside. We are burning a lot of firewood, but we're really grateful to have it. Grateful to have the wood stove and grateful to be working inside. Remodel is coming along well. The wooden ceiling is, ooh, it's time consuming. We've been uh, working on, we should get the main room finished today and 
and I'll share, we'll share an update on that here pretty soon. So also uh, other news about the channel. So Mrs. W and I have been talking about, there's been such a demand for to bring back the Bible study. And if you don't know already, the reason why we're not able to do it is because of our internet connection. It's just not good enough uh, to allow us to live stream. The quality was just unacceptable. So we're trying to come up with a solution. Where maybe it's to pre-record something, but uh, good news is, is Mrs. W um, is considering joining and something that maybe we can do together. So we're still working on exactly what that's going to look like, what the topic's going to be, but whatever it is, uh, we'll probably be releasing at the same time Thursday evening. So more information on that to follow. Also, um, what else was there? Oh, I've got a video for you. So if you enjoyed these um, videos, uh, the top 10 tools that every man needs for his tool belt and every woman needs for her tool belt, uh, this is the hammer section. I've also got there on the playing and the uh, thumbnail is a speed square. Tips and tricks to why I like the speed square, why it's so useful, why it's an essential tool that all of you should have. So again, uh, if you want to, to support the channel, I invite you to click the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, you can click on that very bright red little button to the right and uh, join the Wrangler Star family of subscribers. And we're always grateful for that as well. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.